investigation, but you don't get what you did in the lab. Okay. Here's the CD Diffraction Lab overview, kind of what all the squads did, and uh, I leave the air propagation to you. Okay. What you had in the lab was you had a laser, let's choose 650 nanometers red, Faria's favorite laser, and uh, what you did is when you had this laser, you trying to keep the angle as just normal as possible to the CD. And if this is the CD over here, what you did is you bounced the light off of the CD, and then when it came back out, trying to keep that angle as short as possible, you had on this side some uh, paper or some viewing screen. Okay. And what really happened is as this light came out, it made a dot here, but it also came out at some angles such that you generated a fringe pattern okay where this is m equals 0 1 2 negative 1 negative 2 okay so that's what you had if we look at this diagram um, some of the the main properties that you need here are in terms of your measurement, if this is kind of how the light moved, you need to know this length. We'll call that big L. Okay. Um, that is the length between that paper and uh, the CD, your viewing screen and the CD there. Okay. The other angle you need here is actually the distance between. Uh, that line in the fringe position. So here's like fringe one, then fringe two would be this length, or fringe negative one would be that, excuse me. And then fringe two could be like this length, and then fringe negative two could be going down. But you need those lengths there, whatever you'd like to call them. You wanna call them little l, call them little l. You wanna call them l prime, call them l prime. It doesn't matter. Eventually what you're going to have though and what really matters is that you have constructed a right triangle with, I like to call them L and little l, okay? Because this is the path your red light took. What this allows you to do is if this is your CD here, it allows you to find what this angle is. You don't know that angle. I mean, measuring it, you could have done that. It would have been miserable to measure it, but you can find it. This is an opposite side. This is an adjacent side. You can say that the inverse tangent of little l over big L equals theta. Excellent. Now that you have that angle theta, you can go ahead and run the equation d sine of theta equals m lambda, where lambda is the color of light you had. In our case, this is our, depending on what you had. If you had the purple light, this will be different. You had the green light, it'll be different. But if you were red, you were somewhere in the 650 mark. Um, maybe you had 640 plus or minus 10 nanometers, okay? Maybe you had some other range. Um, but this is the equation we're using. For our fringes, uh, you're either using a 1 or a 2 because uh, you can't really use the 0 here. It's just exactly the length away. You don't get anything useful out of it. Um, but you can use a 1 or a 2. And uh, what we're doing is we're solving for D. We're solving for uh, the slit width because, remember, on this CD, what's actually happening is uh, there are tons of and tons of spaces between the diffraction grating, uh, well, for the CD, where the data is spaced out. 
So we're actually getting what is that tiny little distance here, d, and that's what we're solving for. Um, because this is actually a grading, you know that d equals 1 over n, where n is the number of uh, spaces. So you could actually figure that out too, you know, how dense is the data on a CD. Um, but that's what you did in the lab. Uh, you just use a reflection grading in order to set up the Young's double slit for a grading. Um, and, we could, and using some measurements here and here, L and L, uh, you're able to find theta. Now, the tricky part about all of this is with the air propagation. Because what you really found here, when you solved that for everything, or you measured everything, is you found L plus the deviation of L, and L plus the deviation of L. Which means that when you take this tan function here to find theta, what you're really doing is you're saying L plus little l over l plus deviation of big L equals some theta plus or minus the deviation of theta. And that means that whenever you do this, you have a division error propagation that you need to do first. And then once you have a division error propagation, then you need to go ahead and say, oh no, here's a function prop. And you'll do that function second. And then that only gives you the angle to put in here. And then now you've got to do more air propagation as you continue to move forward. So we'll have fun with that in class. Um, as we'll see, the sine of theta doing the upper and the lower, this will be our third air propagation. And then we, when we divide it over, we're going to get our fourth over here. Uh, and that should take everything it is. So division one, tangent two, sine three, lambda four. Then we get D and its associated air value. So that's kind of a neat thing there. Whenever we are doing the, uh, oops, Fry and Jerry, where'd you come from? We're doing the CD diffraction lab. Okay. So that's just kind of a brief overview of it. We'll see that as we go. Um, when we want to do weighted averages, we'll get all the class data together and talk about that. Uh, as well okay so that's as far as we're gonna go with that CD diffraction lab bin oh I love you Faraya Faraya Jerry